Just over the past few weekends, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And our theme verse is found in Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And I want to get started and go ahead and read this verse in our hearing today. So in Acts 19, the new church is growing, and Paul has arrived at Ephesus. And the Bible says there he found certain disciples, some disciples of Jesus, and he asked them, he asked them the question that I asked you two weeks ago. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, no, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So we want to pick up with that thought again today. You know, I've discovered that most people understand God our Father. We understand when we say God the Father, we, we recognize that. Most people understand when we say Jesus the Son of God. We understand Jesus Christ. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, some have misunderstood or I believe simply been misinformed about who the Holy Spirit is and what his role is supposed to be in our lives. And so the reason why we teach these messages is because we want to help every one of you understand the Holy Spirit and what his purpose is in your life. So in week one, two weeks ago, we explained the words spirit and ghost. <laughs> And these are the words that the translators used to try and describe the Holy Spirit. And we learn the actual definition of spirit or ghost means a burst of air or, or a breath of fresh air. Literally, the word in Hebrew and Greek is an expression, and it's like this. <sighs> I brushed my teeth. But that's what it means when it says Holy Spirit. They didn't know how to define God, the Holy Spirit, that part of God. Can we say God, Holy Breath? They didn't. So they said Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. In other words, the presence of God is meant to be felt. The presence of God is meant to be experienced just like we have felt him in this room today. The Holy Spirit simply wants to put some wind back in your sails and lift your life, everybody. How many of you received that here today? Amen. And then last week, Pastor Nathan talked about the power of the Holy Spirit and his ability to pray for us when we don't know what to say. We are limited as human beings to time and space, but God isn't. Our prayers are also limited by our own human knowledge and logic and the understanding of a situation. So often when I pray, I pray in the language I know, my English language, broken as it may be, but I'm praying with what I understand about a situation. But how many of you know there comes a time in our life and there's certain circumstances in our life that I don't know what words to use? Janet's battle with cancer all these many years. A PET scan again on Tuesday. I'm praying over here this morning on the front row. I stopped praying in English and I started praying in an unknown tongue, an unknown language. Because I don't know what all I need to be praying for. But the Holy Spirit can pray for me in words that my mind don't comprehend. But my heart and my spirit is interceding for me to God, his truth. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He's not limited to time and space. And he can actually pray and intercede for us, according to Romans 8, 26, speaking through us in a heavenly language that we don't understand. And when I get through praying, you say, that sounds really weird. When I get through praying, I just say, I believe I receive what I just said in Jesus' name. Because my spirit would never pray, the Holy Spirit would never pray anything that was not good for my life. It's actually our spirit communicating directly to God, praying his perfect will to be done in our lives. Isn't that amazing and wonderful, everybody, that the Holy Spirit could help us like that? So that's the last two weeks. Hey, that'd be a pretty good sermon if we stopped there, but we're not going to stop right there. All right? So today...
today what I want to do is I want to talk to, to us about the gifts God's given every one of us. The gifts. The first gift God has given you is the gift of eternal life. Aren't you glad for that today? God gives the gift of eternal life to every single one of us, and it stands alone. Now, let me show you a verse that says it very clearly. Romans chapter 8, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. So, if you don't want to receive the gift of eternal life, the only option is for you to pay for your own sin. There's a wage attached to every one of our sins, which is death, the sin of death. But Jesus didn't want you and doesn't want you to die for your sin, so he came and he took our place. This was what the cross of Jesus was all about. God, our heavenly father, sent his one and only son, Jesus, to take our place, and that's the good news here today. Can you give Jesus an ovation for dying on the cross for us and the good news of paying for our sin? So the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God for every one of us is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. And that's the best gift. And I say again that this gift stands alone on its own because we get it for free. There's nothing we can do to earn it or to deserve it, either before you get it or after. This is very important for every one of us to understand. God wanted to give you this gift without you feeling you earned it. So let me say it this way. You can't do enough to get it, and you can't do enough to keep it. You can't go to church enough. You can't read your Bible enough. You can't pray enough. You can't tithe enough. You can't serve enough. Why? Because Jesus paid it all and he gave it to you for free. God gives salvation to you for free. Paul said it in the book of Ephesians. He said, for it's by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It's a gift of God. So... Pastor, why are you pointing that out? Why are you stressing on that? Because the next gifts I'm going to talk about have to do with you doing some work. The next gifts God gives us has an assignment attached to it. And that's why these gifts are separate. So the first gift everybody receives, and it's for free, is salvation. Here's the second gift God gives us. He gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, scriptures clearly say the Holy Spirit is a gift from God for you. Acts chapter 1, verse 4, Jesus is talking to his followers after the resurrection. And he's telling them, he said, do not leave the city of Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. Everybody say the gift. He said, it's a gift my father promised, which you have heard me talk about. For John the Baptist baptized with water, but I told you that in a few days you're going to be baptized. You're going to be consumed. You're going to be immersed. You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift for every one of you. Can I get a yes from somebody? So God gave us the gift of eternal life, and then he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now here's the third gift. God gives us spiritual gifts. One translation in the actual words spiritual gifts means divine enablement. Everyone say that with me. Divine enablement. Now, unfortunately, many people today are still confused about spiritual gifts. Some were even confused in the Bible, and so Paul had to address it. In the Corinthian church, chapter 12 and verse 1, he says it this way. About spiritual gifts, brothers, I, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be confused. So where does this confusion about spiritual gifts come from that I see widespread in many churches today? Some say that spiritual gifts existed in the Bible, but when the last disciples died, that spiritual gifts also died and that miracles died. That theology is called cessationism. And cessationism believes that all the spiritual gifts ceased. 
But I'm here to tell you that if one miracle has happened since the disciples died, then they have not ceased. Now listen, everybody, I got good news for you. The great physician is still doing miracles and still healing today. He hasn't closed up shop. He hadn't packed up and went to heaven. He didn't take all the miracles and all the gifts with him. He still wants to give you every one of his spiritual gifts. Every one of you have at least one or more of those spiritual gifts. Listen, Janet may still be fighting cancer, but it's been miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle where the doctors are throwing up their hands. I don't know why you're still here. I know why she's still here because God's not through yet. Don't tell me miracles died with the apostles. Now, here's what I understand. The fact is that a lot of people aren't turned off by the truth of that. They're turned off by the packaging that has been associated with spiritual gifts. And I don't want to go to those, one of those churches where everything's moving, where it's weird, you know, and people are saying things and they're talking in languages they don't know and they're lifting their hands. And I don't know if I want to go to a church like that. I, that's really what I see is cause most of the confusion. People just don't understand. And really, most people don't have a problem with spiritual gifts, I don't think. They just have a problem with the one that I'm kind of talking about today, and that's the gift of tongues. <laughs> I'd like to have that gift of faith. That'd be great. I love the gift of serving. Man, that gift of discernment, I could figure out what my kids are doing. <laughs> but this gift of tongues, man, I'm not so sure about that. And the truth is that some have even been taught to avoid it. Listen, you never need to avoid anything that God has given you. And the gift of tongues shouldn't be treated as something less than good. If God has given it, then it's good, everybody. Now, it's also equally important that our focus not just be on that one gift. They're all good. And God wants all of you to have them. Paul said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He said, a spiritual gift is given to each of you. Every one of you has been given a spiritual gift. Why? Well, the rest of the verse explains it. He says, you've been given a spiritual gift so we can, so we can, say it with me, so we can, come on, say it with me, we can help each other. In other words, your gift has an assignment attached to it. I believe your enemy would do everything he can to make sure that you, that, you have, that you never experience what God has for you, that you never stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of you. In fact, he's been doing it since the beginning of time. In the Old Testament, the gift of God was only in a few people, and these people were called priests. However, when the New Testament came along, and when the day of Pentecost happened, and when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all people, something significant changed. And that is there were no longer a special clergy or special priest that operated in the gifts of God. The power of God was now unleashed and came upon everyone, every believer who begins to follow Jesus. In fact, the Jewish followers of Jesus were so amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on every single person, even those who were not Jewish. But then it was some years later, the early church started hiring special people, and they gave them titles. And these titles aren't even in the Bible. They called them clergy. Everybody say clergy. Which simply means, ready? One who reads. That's what clergy means. And here's what they were saying. You be the professional minister and all of the spiritual gifts will operate through you and the church will just sit on the sidelines. So they called the professional ministers clergy and then they called the church, that's all of you, they called the church laymen. And that's about all they did. Just lay around and they weren't doing a thing. Then... In the 1500s, you have what's called the Protestant Reformation. 
Basically, this reformation happened in Europe because of the simple discovery of, a, of one biblical truth. They said this, the gifts of God and the power of God can be inside every single one of us. And it doesn't just happen to clergy or the reverend. Man, I, I kind of cringe when people say, hello, reverend. I'm like, ooh. It can happen to every one of us. You can be filled with the spiritual gifts of God. And unfortunately, when that reformation happened, not long after, things digressed again. And many went right back to the way many still believe it is today, where a lot of people think that there's two classes of Christians, that there's the clergy and that there is the layman. And people have treated it that way. I mean, like I've been outside with family, friends, and a cloud start to come up and we're doing something fun and people look at me like, do something. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you want me to do? Why don't you pray? Now, y'all not excited about this because every one of you know you felt this way and you've looked at somebody like, well, hey, there's nobody more spiritual than you. You got as much of God when you got saved as you're ever gonna get. You don't get a little bit of God and some people get a lot of God. Some people just exercise their gift more than you. So some people look at you like, I've got something special as if my prayers work better than yours or if I, I possess some gift that, that you don't. Listen, all of us have spiritual gifts. I've got mine and you've got yours. God has put something on the inside of every one of you that he wants to use in a special way that will be both fulfilling to you and will make an eternal difference in the lives of people. And it's my job to help you find it. It's Pastor Nate's job to help you find it. And that's why we're teaching on these things today. You're kind of quiet because I said there's an assignment assigned to your gift. You're like, oh, what do I got to do? You got to do whatever God tells you to do. That's not my job to tell you. It's my job to tell you you got a spiritual gift and to help you develop it and to help you find it and to help you use it. But it's your job to obey God to make a difference and do what he says. We all right? So, so let me give you my best spiritual gift definition, right? A spiritual gift is a supernatural ability God gives to each one of his children so that together, together, each of us doing our unique part, we can advance God's purpose in this world. I want you to read that again. I want you to think about that. But this gift only works best when we all use our gifts together. Because we're like body parts. We're all connected together. And if one part is missing, it affects all the rest. It hinders what we could do together. In other words, God's got something he needs all of us to do. What are you doing? No, I'm not asking you to text me and tell me what you're doing right now. I'm just saying, what are you doing? Did you know we're on assignment and we're on mission and we can't accomplish without discovering, we can't accomplish that assignment and that mission without discovering the unique gift that God has on you? Skybreak Church has been given a mission and God has planted you here. Now, if you're not, let me be just as clear as, as I can be. If you're supposed to be planted in Skybreak Church, then you need to plant yourself and you need to dive in the deep end and you need to go in all the way and you, need, you don't need to, how can you serve God? God, hanging out on the fringes of the pool when you never really get your feet wet. Listen, if you're not supposed to be here, you need to go where God wants you to get planted because you need to unite your heart and your passion and your gifts, your spiritual gifts, with a mission that God has given a local church and buy into that mission and buy into that vision and sell out to it. It's like... Gosh, it's like trying to push a car that won't run and everybody wants to sit on the hood while you're trying to push it. <laughs> how many of you know that? How many of you ever pushed a car that won't run? Hold your hand up. Hold it high. Come on. Ever pushed a car? Surely most ever. Come on, come on. Some of you don't know what that feel like because all you've known is automatic transmissions and I don't know what to do. I got it. What do I? It won't roll. We put it in neutral. It'll roll, okay? <laughs> but... 
Have you ever been pushing a car and you're like, if somebody get off the hood and get back here with me, we can push this thing. It'd make it a whole lot easier. Are you listening to me? Sometimes you feel like you're trying to lead a church and everybody's sitting on the hood like, man, I wish y'all do something. Wish y'all start this thing. Wish y'all turn on the air conditioner. I'm like, hey, get off and start helping us push. Use your gift. And if this ain't the car you're supposed to be pushing, go find the car you're supposed to be pushing and get in there. Hey, that's good preaching, everybody. Thank you for that golf clap. That was really nice of you. Very, very nice of you. Well, I'm not so sure about this. You have an assignment. In fact, I'd like to take a minute and honor the team at Skybreak Church that's making the dream come true every week right here. Come on, would you help me? Many of them aren't even in this room right now, and you're honoring them. They're holding babies. They're talking to seven-year-olds about their concerns. They're, they're running cameras in this room right now. They're back there in hidden rooms running all kinds of stuff. Many are serving in hospitality. They were up here. Come on, we ought to thank these people. Come on, somebody, let's honor the team that's making the dream come true. <laughs> Church doesn't just happen because people show up. Man, I'm preaching better than you're amen in right now. I'll tell you what, I've <laughs> these people use their unique gifts that God have enabled, has enabled them to do so we can advance the purpose of God. And I'm here to tell you, this is the bedrock message of the New Testament, and it's the bedrock message of our church. And that's what Growth Track is all about. Everybody say Growth Track. Growth Track is about helping you discover your gifts and the reality of how you can use them in the church to make an eternal difference. Can I get a big amen, somebody? So how do we do it? How do we do that? How do, I'm glad you asked. How do we get involved? How do we use our gift? How does that take place in our life? Well, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to learn how to develop your gift. Let me go back for a minute. I'm jumping over some stuff here I want to share with you. How do we use our spiritual gifts? The first thing is you've got to discover the gifts God has for you. You've got to go on a discovery. And you gotta find out what your gifts are. Let me say it this way. Your spiritual gift is not your natural talent. Your spiritual gift is not even your skill set. So, so let me just be very clear, very honest, as I hope I always am. For me to stand and speak to you today on a stage like this is not easy. Well, you make it look easy. Well, it ain't easy. I didn't do so well in my speech class in high school. I didn't do so well in English 101. We didn't even know about ADD and ADHD or whatever all that stuff's called. And they didn't talk about that. They just told me, would you please be still and sit down and shut up? And we're so tired of calling your parents that in the second grade, my classroom was out in the portables. Y'all know what the portables are, right? It was a long ways to the principal's office. So they got permission from my parents, thank you, from my parents to paddle me outside the door of the portable classroom because I got in trouble so much, not because I was mean, but because, because I was always in everybody's business. I couldn't sit still, and if the teacher didn't give me something to do, I mean, we'd start reading the story, and then I had my own movie playing in my mind. I didn't hear any more of the story. I had my own story. And back then, I got paddled for being in other people's business. Today, I get paid for it. I'm all in your business today. How about that? How about that? But what I'm trying to tell you is it takes me a lot of preparation. <laughs> We're on page five of nine pages today. So you'll be like, oh gosh, we still got 30 more minutes. That's what you're, you're halfway through. On page five, I have to write it out. I, I write it out right there. If I gave you this sermon, you could preach this sermon. Probably wouldn't be as good, but I'll just write, anyway, I just... <laughs> Just messing with you. But I write those notes because my mind wonders. And I want to make sure 
that what I'm saying to you is said in the most effective way to communicate. So I write it down, I take time. I had this sermon fully written on Monday, but I gotta read it and tweak it and read it and tweak it. Here's the beautiful part about the gift. It might not be my natural talent, and my mind may wonder, but there's a gift inside of me that God will divinely enable you to do what he's gifted you to do. He made it obvious to me when I was 15 years old that this was what I was supposed to do, and he'll make it obvious to you whether you're 15, 50, or 84. That's how old dad is. Romans 12 says, we, everybody say, that's me. Everybody say, that's me. We have different gifts. So we've got to get you into a scenario where you're exposed to more, the more than 27 spiritual gifts that the Bible talks about so you can find your gift and you do that when you attend growth track. We talk about growth track time and again. You know, what's growth track? You gotta go to growth track. That is the pathway into discovering. The Bible says we have different gifts according to the grace given us. The words grace and gift here are the words charis and the words charisma, charisma, which means it's a grace gift. It means that it's divine enablement. God enables you supernaturally to do what he's called you to do. My mind may wonder, but when I get up to preach, I sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that mantle that sets into my brain and into my heart, and I know when I'm talking to people, when I'm zeroing in, I know when it's hitting home because the Holy Spirit enables me and then he speaks through me things I didn't write down. <laughs> That's when I really know it's like mm, somebody, ooh, that, somebody, somebody felt that today. Why? Because the Holy Spirit spoke that even in addition to what I had written down. And this simply means when you're doing what you're called to do, it's going to be easy for you. It's easy for me because it's my grace gift. Now, now on a Another note, it's not so easy for Janet to get up and speak. She was it just, it just, it just nerves and she just didn't, didn't work. But, but she's got some gifts. And I honestly don't know how she does some of the things she does. And the way she reads it, I'm like, what? how did you understand that? Oh, it was the gift of discernment. I missed that, but she didn't. Let me say it this way. You don't want me serving in some areas because it's not my gift. I, like, like, I don't want to be over in Skybreak Kids right now. <laughs> now, I love kids. And I love most of your kids. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. I got seven grands and one on the way. I'm getting extra duct tape. Ready to go, baby, everybody. <laughs> Sit down. No, we don't do that in church. I'm just teasing. But if I was in the kids' ministry, I'd be like, uh, where's the duct tape? <laughs> Set them down, wrap them up, don't move. Now I gotta go to the bathroom again? You've went seven times. You trying to be biblical or what? <laughs> There's some of you that just love receipts. You love receipts. Like, man, I just wanna do receipts. I'm like, more power to you. I hate receipts. Take pictures of them, send them to somebody else to file. What I'm trying to tell you is the difference is I'm in my grace gift and they're in theirs. And we got some people in this room and we got some people serving right now that they are magical with these kids. There are people that know how to organize. Their, listen, how do you play an instrument? I can bang on a drum, but th there, there's people that have talent for that. You're, you're gifted to do that. Look, you got to get in your gift and I got to stay in mine and we want you to find yours if you don't know what it is. You say, well, how do I find it? You go to step two of the growth track. In step two of growth track, it'll tell you and show you what you'll discover, that God didn't just create your hair color and your height, but Psalm 139 says, you created me, O God, in my inmost being while I was in my mother's womb. In other words, you have desires that God put in you, even in your mother's womb. So, you, so you, you love what you love and you cry about what you cry about because you see things through the lens of your spiritual gift. Some people can be bothered by something and other people not even recognize it. It's because it's your gift. For example, for those who, who, of you who have the gift of helps, 
You walk into a room like this one and you see chairs that need to be straightened and has, has everything clean and in order. Some of you, you didn't even notice that because you can't even find a pair of underwear to wear. They're all piled up in the corner of the room somewhere. <laughs> there are those of you who have the gift of mercy and you saw the person sitting by themselves when you walked in this room today because it's a gift in you. Two people in the same room, different gifts. Why? Because God did that. And what you notice probably has something to do with the gift inside of you. So stop ignoring it and step into it. Are we all right, everybody? So, so David says, God knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, Lord. Why? Because I've discovered who you made me to be. That's why David could praise God. He's like, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, of course, men would do this, right? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Women walk by a mirror and they see something wrong every time. Is, is this the, right? This, this, this. But, but a guy goes, he walks by a mirror and it doesn't matter how fat we are. We look in the mirror and we go, what's up? <laughs> I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Look at this flesh, baby. Just want to make sure y'all still listening. But David says, I praise you because your works are wonderful. God made you just like he wanted you. And that's what makes Skybreak so beautiful with all the beauties of skin color and nationality and diversity and background and ethnicities is because he made you special the way he wanted you to be. And don't you ever let anybody tell you that you are not God's child and that you are not special and that you're not the apple of his eye because every one of us are the apple of God's eye. But let's look at the next line of that verse. And many of us can't say this. David said, I know it full well. I know what I'm supposed to do. And that's why you need our growth track because you don't, you don't know what it is and we can help you find it. When you take step two, we'll do a personality profile. We'll do a spiritual gifts assessment and you're gonna find out. You can get started living out the rest of your lives. And you can live out what the rest of this verse says. The verse goes on to say, I love the way David wrote it. He said, all the days God ordained for you, which were written in his book, before one of them came to be. God's already got your gift assigned to you. He's got an assignment for you. Have you found it yet? So we believe we want to help you so that all the days God ordained for you and for your life can start to happen. Instead of the book that is being written right now about some of your lives that you know is not the one that God had planned for you. Let me say it this way. God's design in me reveals God's destiny for me. God's design in me. That's what Growth Track is all about. And I need about three hours of your time and we're gonna help you. If you haven't been, why aren't you not going? If you went two years ago, you need to go again. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta discover. We wanna help you discover your gift. Let me land this thing. Here's the second thing. You gotta develop the gifts God's given me. Once I discovered, I gotta develop it. Now let me explain something. Gifts change when you mature. For example, when you first came to Jesus, and maybe you're, you're still doing it because you love to do it. Maybe, maybe when you first come to Jesus, you're part of the cleaning team or serving in the coffee shop or maybe you're like, I can park cars, I can do that. I may not know the Bible, but I can park cars. I mean, whatever it might be. Some people are gifted to park cars because we need people to know what they're doing. We need leaders out there loving people, waving people. And, and so you're stirred to just get on board somewhere, start somewhere. But as you mature and you've been here a while, then there may be a new tug in your heart. That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Eagerly, eagerly desire. What? Spiritual gifts. 
even desire the gifts you don't have. One translation says, covet the best gift. Man, I wish, God, I, if you put that gift in me, I'd love to serve you like that. I'd like to sing like some of these people up here, but I don't get up here and sing because I ain't got that gift. There's some notes I can't hit. My range is like, like this. You know, like, mm, okay, that's okay. But God, if you'd put that gift in me, I'd serve you. Listen, I want you to hear me today. Some of you, listen to me. You know you have, you've had gifts in your life, but for some reason, your lives have gone dormant. Maybe circumstances have pulled you away from the things of God, and maybe you're out of the game right now, and you're feeling it, especially in a message like this, and you don't feel you can get back into the game right now, listen to this pastor. Listen to me. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't give up on the dream that's on the inside of you. Never give up that dream. Never give up that passion that God has put in you. And I'm telling you, no matter how much you've done and no matter how far you've gotten away from the things of God, he can still pull you and get you back to the purpose and the plans he has for your life. Maybe there's a few chapters in the book of your life that you didn't intend to be there. <laughs> I think we all have that. Yeah. Like, man, if I was writing the book of my life, it wouldn't have that in there. Well, sometimes we just got off on a wrong road or we, something happens. We, you know, there's the life you plan and then there's the life that happens to you. But here's, here's the good news. Are you listening? Here's the good news. The last chapter always fits because God gets to write the ending of your story if you're following his purpose. Come on, somebody. Are you thankful for that here today? No matter, no matter, no matter. And no matter how far you've gotten from God's plan, I'm reminding you, fan the flame. Paul said to Timothy, for this reason, I remind you to fan the flame of the gift of God that's in you. That's what I'm trying to do today is to, is to get you to back to the spark, get that spark glow and trying to blow on that, trying to inspire you. All so that we can do the last step. You discover, you develop, and then we want you to use your gifts. Use them. Use the gifts God's given you. Now let me say it this way. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, your number one goal in life is to get to know him, to know God. And then once you know him, the rest of your life, you have one goal. After you become a follower, after you know him, your one goal is to use the gifts God's put in you. So if you don't know Jesus, then that's where your whole life is about to start. That's what it's all about, is to go on the discovery of who Jesus is. And if you know Jesus, we can summarize the rest of your life down to one assignment, and that is to use the gift that he's put in you. Now hear this, none of us, none of us are guaranteed time to do all the things I'm talking about. You don't know if you're gonna have a week or a year? What if you lived in the Ukraine right now? Your whole world's upside down. We're sitting here in this country all wondering what's going to happen. Where is this leading us? We don't know the future. We're not guaranteed time to just sit and wait for God to use us. So, so the, if you're thinking you got time, and then, then later I'll get in a small group. Later I'll go to growth track. Next week, next month, you don't have a guarantee of tomorrow. What are you waiting for? Why would you wait another week? Why would you wait another day? You could take growth track online today. Why would you waste another day? Because you don't know whether you'll be alive tomorrow or not. So, what will you do with the time and the opportunity you have now? Peter said, God has given gifts to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well. So here's what I'm gonna say to you. Take time now to discover and we'll help you develop the gift. Go to Growth Track. We'll help you figure out what you're supposed to be doing. You got saved and once you get saved, now that's your assignment is to use the gift. 
God's given you. Let me invite you to bow your heads all across this room just for a moment. And let me go back to the beginning. And that is, if you don't know God, that's where you start. That is your assignment. That is your next step. If you don't know Jesus as the Savior of your life, why not surrender right now? Why not start there? That is your next step. Jesus came, as I said in the beginning of this message, he was God's only son. The wages of sin were death. And you can pay your own wage if you want to, but Jesus came and paid it for you. And he said, if you'll accept me in my death on the cross and my forgiveness of your sin, if you'll receive me as the Lord of your life, I'll give you that eternal life that I talked about. So right now I want to ask you, if you'd like to pray a prayer with me and I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. I want Jesus. I want to know him. I want Jesus in my life. I want to make sure I'm ready to go to heaven. Hear me. There's nothing more important that I could say to you right now or invite you to do than to ask Jesus to be the Savior of your life. Don't live another moment in the sin that you were born in. Accept the gift of salvation and eternal life that Jesus gave you. Can I pray with you and lead you in that prayer right now? It's that simple. Now, here's what I'd like to do while your heads are bowed. If you say, Pastor, I want to be certain that I'm ready for heaven and I want to pray that prayer today. I'm going to lead you in that prayer, but I'd like to know who I'm praying with. Would you just slip up your hand and say, that's me. I want to make sure I'm ready to go to heaven and receive the gift of eternal life. Would you lift your hand right now all across the room, right there online, wherever you're viewing from, you can click, you can talk to somebody. We're here for you today. Just raise your hand in this room. Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, lift that hand. Lift it high. Church, are you praying for people right now to make that decision? Are you praying for people? Just lift that hand. Lift it high. I want to know Jesus. I want to be ready to go to heaven. I want eternal life. Just lift your hand wherever you are. Thank you so much. You can put that hand down, and I want you to pray with me. Let's all say this prayer. Say, dear Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Forgive me of my past. Take away my sin. Today is a new day, and I will do my best to follow you and serve you as Lord and leader of my life from this day forward. So thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, just quiet for a moment. I know this is different, but I want you to close your eyes again. Father, I pray for every person who is trying to discover the gifts that you have put in them right now. And I declare and I charge every one of us to begin to develop the gifts as we discover them, that we will develop the gifts you've given us and use them in your church until you come. If that's you today, I ask you to surrender your life to the Lord. I ask you to commit to going to growth track, getting in a small group so that you can become all that God has called you to be. He has spiritual gifts for every one of you. They are in you. And my job is to help get them out of you so you can be the church God's called us to be. In Jesus' name. Would you join me in giving Jesus a big ovation right now, everybody? Come on.